Hey all, here OS Reviews, you're watching our hands-on review of Trackamo, a smart location tracker that can be used for pets, for keychains, for luggage, and even kids and the elderly, I guess. It retails for $200, which is on the expensive side. That's because the average tracker uses Bluetooth, which physically connects to your phone, but once Bluetooth is turned off, or if you're out of range, usually between 10 meters and 33 feet, you're basically out of luck. But Trackamo uses both GPS and GSM, so it has a cellular connectivity to it, which means Regardless of where you are in the world, it should be able to find the item's location and you're able to track it on your phone, tablet, or even on a computer using a web app, which is basically their website. So that's very promising, and part of the reason why it's a little expensive is because it includes one year of service. You can think of it as coming bundled with a prepaid plan for a year, and in that year it's able to use GSM or the cellular connectivity freely. Here's the smart tracker, we'll take a closer look at it in a second. We also get a carrying pouch, which is made out of fabric, includes a clip on the back, and the module can slip in for easier transportation. We also have a lanyard strap if you want to wear it around your neck or put it onto a real keychain. There's also a micro USB cable for charging. So taking a look at the design of the smart module, it is made primarily out of plastic, but it has a polycarbonate frame that makes it feel reasonably sturdy. It does have this interesting textured prism look. To check that the Trackamo is turned on, you can tap on any of the keys and you'll see a green LED if there is juice. The battery life will last f between two to three days on a single charge, so that's not the longest life in the world, but because all the cellular antennas are always turned on, including GSM and GPS, it does drain power relatively quick. So if you're going on a longer international travel or flight, I would also recommend bringing along a power bank just to occasionally juice it up. The good thing is when you are charging it, the unit is still turned on, so it still is able to pinpoint your location and it doesn't just go offline during that time. Software-wise, Trackamo is using just a web app. There isn't a mobile version that you can download on iOS or the Android Play Store. You need to go to app.trackamo.com using any browser, so you can use a desktop or a laptop or using your phone, this is what the interface looks like. Now something I want to point out is on a mobile device, you'll usually load the mobile version of the site first. And there is a limitation because you're unable to activate and bind new trackers when on the mobile version of the site. So initially I was confused because the instructions didn't hint at this, but it's only after loading the desktop version are you able to physically tap to add and then bind a uh, device by entering the ID and the last four digits of the IMEI number. So how you access this information is on the back of the tracker where, where you'll see a silver sticker. So there are a few things we can check out in the app. First of all, this main screen is just the map. We can realign ourselves in terms of directionality to be pointing northwards. And I can also see it using a satellite view or I can also check out a hybrid view so I can see both the streets as well as the overhead of the satellite image. Now you also get a little key on the bottom of the distance and you can also see that it's using open street map as opposed to something like Google Maps, which is kind of interesting. Tapping on the specific pen will tell me that the exact coordinates of my location, and it's going to tell you if it's using GPS or if it's using cellular to pinpoint that. Typically, if you are indoors, it's going to be using uh, cellular because uh, GSM networks tend to pass through the walls of, of a building a little bit easier. And you can also tap on follow, and what that really does is it keeps on tracking this specific device, and it will show the path on a map as it's moving along. Finally, I can tap on the speaker here to let the uh, tracker itself ring. Because there is a small built-in speaker on the edges of the fob, so you are able to locate the fob if you know it's, let's say, inside of a building but you don't know exactly where, it's now going to produce a little bit of sound. Now if I bring up this uh, context menu, I can also tap on additional settings which will allow me to change things like the uh, speed warning, so if it's traveling fast enough it will push me a notification. I can also reprogram the keys, so I can make the left key do a custom message sent up to 10 people. So for instance, if I tap on this, it can say, I'm fine, and that'll be sent to my friends and family. If I tap on the right key, I can say a different message, like I'm in danger, for instance. Under device details, I can rename myself and I can take a look at the subscription. So right now I have one year of service remaining and I've used zero out of 10 text alerts so far. Geofence allows me to add, to add up to five virtual spaces where the fob can be safely within. So for instance, if it's within the parameters of a building, it's not going to give me any alerts, but once it steps outside, it will push something to text message or through the app. This would be useful if you're trying to track a child or maybe the elderly or a pet and you don't want them to get lost. 
The second bar over is history. You're able to select a range from uh, you know, the calendar. So for instance, if I want to go from uh, the 30th, and it's going to tell me the coordinates of the device's location within this range, I can export it as a CSV, which stands for a comma separated value, where it's going to give you the coordinate points separated by commas in a database format if you want to manage that. Or I can simply tap on search, and it's going to tell me within this range what was the last known location. So it's uh, doing that right now. I can tap on search again. It's just going to keep on zooming into the specific location of the fob. Third bar over is going to be alarms and notifications. It's going to tell me when each button was pressed as well as uh, the specific times. You can now see on a map where this is showing up. It's also going to give me the coordinate points as well. And here's an example of what the email looks like. So again, it's not going to only show up through the app, but it's also going to send it by email. It's also going to send it by text message up to the 10 numbers that you have inputted and saved into the app. So this is the email and it told me, you know, this is my location when it was wrong for the SOS in that quick demo. And uh, you can tell it the speed is zero because we were just staying still. Some additional tricks I want to show you is you can actually change the marker icon. So if there's a lot of trackamos in a particular city that you're in, if it's very busy, you can use a different icon to make it stand out more. Also, there is a share button that you can tap on. This is actually very cool. It allows you to actually share the tracker's uh, kind of location and data information for X amount of hours. So that can be one hour, five hours, 10, 24, or a custom duration. And it creates a shareable URL that you can send to friends and family members, which then expires after that time is up. But within that time frame, people can tap and then see your location on a map. When it comes to overall performance and accuracy, I would say it's it's reasonably good. Uh, using GPS, it is fairly accurate. It will actually tell you the precise uh, kind of coordinates. And in my testing, it was for the most part spot on, at least if you are outdoors. If it's indoors, it may struggle a little more. And again, switch to the GSM, which is uh, based on cell tower uh, triangulation, which is uh, more approximated. And if you're using the GSM, it may be slightly off by a few blocks or a few buildings, but it's still gonna give you the relative location. Uh, there's not too much latency. So movements in real time are reflected on the app, maybe with a 20 to 30 second delay, but afterwards things seem to be relatively up to speed. So as a quick demo, I can tap on the SOS, key here. Uh, I have to actually hold on this for a few seconds and you'll see the blue LED flash. That means it's sending it using uh, GPS. So there is GPS uh, signal right now. And now there's an alert that sounded on my phone. Again, about 20 second delay, as well as the email that's popped up that, that says the SOS button has been pressed. So that's Trackamo. Although it claims to be the world's smartest tracker, I'm not sure it lives up to that very lofty claim because there are competitors out there that also have GPS and cellular built on in, albeit at similar price points. So if you're just ordering in a, in a hurry, or it may even be sold at certain airports, uh, it makes a lot of sense because folks may be short of time and don't want to go through the hassle of buying something and then ordering the correct SIM card and going through all of that prepaid process. But uh, the downside would be the fact that again, you're limited to 10 text messages per month. However, you have unlimited email alerts as well as a web app alerts through the uh, kind of website, which is uh, app.trackamo.com. So you can check out more details in the links down below, but for now, that's been our video. If you're looking for a smart, easy to use tracker, that can be accessed through any browser on any device for tracking luggage, kids, keys, objects, parents, the elderly. This is definitely something to take a closer look at. So thanks for watching here at OS Reviews. That's been our hands-on review 